the pressure head consists of a seal held down by a variable force which could be a set of weights, a movable spring or something like that. It's just something that you can adjust to set the relief pressure that you need. As the pressure in the tank builds, it applies force to the seal. If that force increases past the set limit, the seal rises, allowing gas and pressure to escape. The shape of the head is designed to maximise the velocity of the gas so that when it escapes, it's blasted high into the air, clear of any personnel in the vicinity. On the vacuum side, it works in a similar way with a seal held down by a force. As the pressure in the tank drops, atmospheric pressure starts to push the seal up. When the pressure differential matches the vacuum setting, the seal is broken allowing air in to release the vacuum inside the tank. So, why didn't any of these valves work on the Faircam Philly? Well, firstly, the PV breaker wasn't in use because the ship was receiving nitrogen from ashore through the vapour return line, rather than using its inert gas system with the PV breaker. The tank's main overpressurization defence was provided by the PV valves. While the valves offer great protection, they're not designed to cope with high volumes. Faircam Philly's PV valves could cope with approximately 17,000 cubic feet per hour, but the terminal's nitrogen line could supply up to 250,000. To lower the rate, you use a smaller diameter hose. The terminal recommended 2 inches and the ship recommended 1. Despite that though, on the day in question, a 4 inch hose was connected. The operation was completely reliant on controlling the flow of nitrogen using manual valves, rather than the physical limitations that would have been imposed by the smaller hose. 